I want you to give me your undivided attention for the next few moments because I'm going to share with you a very personal story. And I want you to hear your aspect of what I'm going to say, what it means to you, and something that I want you to be made aware of as it relates to dreams that you may have or you may have had or may have in the future. Um, I'm going to talk for a moment about dreaming about snakes. And I'm going to give you a very personal story that happened several years ago that was that could have changed the course of my life and my entire family. Um, when you dream dreams, many times if it's a spiritual dream, there'll be symbolism found in the Bible that will be used in the dream. I have dreamed of fish and I knew that that meant people or that can also represent the ministry. I have dreamed uh, dreams of wheat fields and corn fields and, and uh, barley fields. And of course that has reference to the economy or it can have reference to the end time harvest. But anytime that you have a dream about a snake of any type, you need to pay attention to the color of the snake, the size of the snake and what the snake is doing. Because a dream of a snake always indicates trouble of some kind. Sometimes it will be trouble coming through an individual. Sometimes it will be trouble coming through the mouths of individuals because a serpent's danger and a serpent's poison is in its mouth. Um, every time I've ever dreamed of a snake dream, it always followed up by some type of conflict with people or some type of trouble. You know, several years ago, I dreamed of a 60 foot snake and I, kn I knew in the spirit how big it was. It was massive coming through an office building, opening its mouth like this and swallowing, it swallowed about 50 to 60 people in its mouth. And I later received the full interpretation of that dream. And uh, it happened the way that I saw it. And I, that's not the dream I want to talk about, of course. But the reason that a serpent in a dream represents something evil is because in Genesis 3 and 15, it was the serpent that tempted Eve. And in Revelation 12, the dragon, that Greek word there is actually a word for serpent. So Satan's identity, now let me say is his symbolism in scripture is that of a serpent. All right. And so let me go back to something. I want you to hear this very carefully about the snake that was in the package. In the 1980s, and this would have been the early 1980s, and if I'm not mistaken, it was about three years or so after Pam and I were married. It may have been four years later, but I'm thinking it was about that time frame. We went to Davis, West Virginia, to my grandparents' house because it was a tradition every Christmas. Uh, I think in my whole time that Grandma and Granddad Baver were living, there's only two times perhaps that we did not go to their house for Christmas that I can remember. Uh, a couple of times they came down to us. And uh, if you don't know where that is, that's uh, all my family worked in the mines. The men worked in the mines years ago when the mines were booming, when they were living, when these men were living. And it's also uh, Davis, West Virginia is up in the, into the area of what we call the panhandle of West Virginia. Uh, Pam and I were traveling at that time nonstop. We actually had traveled one point in the 1980s, 16 weeks and preached every night for 16 weeks. Stayed in hotel rooms, pastor's homes, whatever we could stay in. So that's how busy we were. In the fall months, she began to complain of some very strange feelings that she was having in her abdomen. And she thought it was some kind of an infection. And it was, of course. And so she began to take medicine. People began to subscribe things to help her. But it, it, it seemed to be getting worse. So Christmas was coming and we didn't want to interfere with Christmas. So Pam and I got in our car, left Cleveland, Tennessee, drove to Davis, West Virginia. My mother and father were there at my grandparents' house in Davis. Dad came to me about two days before Christmas and said, Perry, I've had the strangest dream. We were sitting in this house opening packages and Pam had a package in her lap. And when she pulled everything off and opened it, a snake popped its head out and turned and bit her. I said, well, Dad, I don't think there's gonna be a literal snake in a package. My dad said, no, but listen to me carefully. Something's going to happen to Pam. This is Pam is my wife. Pa something's going to happen to Pam on Christmas Day. 
Christmas Eve, she started getting the shivers and the house was very warm. And I said, baby, what's wrong? She says, I'm just shivering, but I'm shivering from the inside. Something's not right. Christmas Day, as we were opening gifts, Pam put her gift down that she'd open. She said, something is wrong and I need help. We picked up the phone on Christmas Day and called Parsons, West Virginia. Parsons is where I was born in 1959 and got a hold of Dr. Michael, who happened to be the doctor who delivered me in the Parsons Hospital, little tiny hospital in 1959. Dr. Michael, this is Mr. Stone and Pam is very sick and it looks like it's serious. She's chilling and she says it's coming from the inside. It's not a flu or a cold. He said, well, it's Christmas day, but bring her down just as soon as you can. So Dr. Michael examined her. Dr. Michael started pressing and she was, she was in pain everywhere he pressed. He said, okay, we're going to start an IV on you and you're not going back to the, to the baby's house. She said, it's Christmas. I have to go back. She he said, no, you're not. They put Pam in that little hospital. She was the only patient in the hospital at that time. That's how probably, I think one nurse worked there. That's how small it was, Parsons, West Virginia. And for five days, they put IVs in her and they fought off an infection. And this is what Dr. Michael told her. If you don't get IVs and something to stop this, you are in toxic shock. You're in toxic poisoning and it's entering your blood. That's why you're having the effects that you're having. Now, this was an old school doctor. He didn't even have to do x-rays or blood tests. He knew enough that he knew. He was one of those great doctors that you, you know, you hear about in those rural areas. And for five days, she was on IVs. Now, my dad's dream of a snake in a package indicated trouble was coming to Pam on Christmas Day. Now, what is interesting, I want you to listen to this now. This was in 1983. In, in 19, um, let's see, 63, I believe it was. 1963, I was a little boy. We had left Parsons, West Virginia at my Aunt Millie's house and were headed to Elkins, West Virginia when dad had an accident in a car, hit a man from behind. My mom's head went through the windshield. He actually grabbed the steering wheel so hard it bent the entire steering wheel over. I hit the dashboard. This is before the days of seat belts. And I had been standing up. Now, I think what probably happened with dad's hand being o over the steering wheel, only God protected me. Mom said she does not remember reaching out her hand to protect me. But I hit the dashboard so hard it knocked the shoes off my feet. Now, that was in 1963. And that was on our way from Parsons to Elkins. 1983, Pam gets sick and is, her life is really saved in that little town, again, where I was born, because of a really good doctor. Of course, we prayed for her, too. I remember I had to come off that mountain every day and go visit her. And, and I was hyper back in those days. I'm studying. I'm reading, you know. So it was hard for me to sit in the hospital room for any length of time. Now, what is interesting is... 2023, my, my baby, Pam, I call her my baby, became very sick with shingles and an infection in her body. Her immune system was extremely low. She had a cough for months that she could not get over. And it was all because of her immune system being so low. It wasn't COVID, but she coughed nonstop and then went into shingles. And on Christmas Day was suffering with shingles while the grandbabies and us and all of us were opening packages. And of course, this has gone on at the time of this taping, you may be watching this in the spring. Of course, this is the time of January when I'm taping this. So she's had this for four weeks. You need to know a couple things. Number one, the serpent represents the adversary, but he comes in cycles. When Satan tempted Jesus, it says that he left Jesus for a season, which means he was coming back at another time. So your trouble is seasonal. It will come, it will go, and then it will be, it will come and again later on. Number two, the enemy will conceal himself until the set time when he's ready to pop his head out of the package, so to speak. So you won't even realize what's going on or you will not realize it's a spiritual attack until the moment it's revealed. Number three, a snake dream is always a warning. And I I'm not going to get into all the snake dreams I've had over the years because there are many. But the, the final thing I will tell you is even in a dream like this, what you do is you pray about it. You pray against the attack. You pray for wisdom 
And the greatest thing is do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of a defeated adversary. Christ has defeated principalities and powers. He has defeated Satan. And therefore, there's nothing to fear. But God will give you a dream as a warning. So if you have a dream, notice the color of it, the size of it, uh, what it's doing. And it will be a clue many times of a warning from the Lord to tell you to beware of a certain thing or beware of certain situations or circumstances even to try to warn you in advance that will protect you from a seriousness of that attack. Now, I want you to subscribe to our channel. I want you to give this a thumbs up. Everybody do that right now. If you, if you really enjoy the teaching, give it a thumbs up. Every time you watch one, give it a thumbs up because it helps keep it before people. And we also offer something brand new. Now, these videos will go on and on and on on YouTube. And a lot of times we're going to eventually run out of books or run out of that particular offer. So get it while you can. It's available. And this helps keep our seven point outreach ministry going. OK, and don't forget to look at our conferences every year and see where we're going to be. God bless you. Humanity's final battle is being set in array, merging men with super advanced technology. Commonly known as artificial intelligence or AI, this new and at times frightening technology is said to be the greatest advancement of man's imagination since the beginning of humanity. But it comes with warnings from experts and developers. While AI can be used to deter crime, track criminals, and search for information at breathtaking speed, AI could eventually take over 80% of human jobs, replacing them with computers and robots. With AI, nothing about your private life, your finances, job, or family will be hidden. In the future, a male or female humanoid robot can become a walking, talking, live-in companion. Wealthy men are hoping AI will create the possibility of eternal life. According to experts, there are great dangers ahead. Uncontrolled AI systems could eventually destroy humanity. AI could also become a scammer's dream, using fake pictures, videos, voices, and accounts to blackmail innocent victims or transfer funds. In Perry Stone's explosive new prophecy book, Artificial Intelligence vs. God, he reveals what others who have written about AI have missed including five ways in which AI will be brought to utter uselessness in the future as God, the creator of mankind, will have the final say as to when nature itself will release unrestrained destruction that will silence both man's modern technology and the electronic systems required for AI to function. Perry's new book presents stunning quotes, biblical word studies, and ancient history to document all the book's eye-opening information. He explains how an ancient clash in Eden and a massive tower in the plains of Shinar conceal huge historical parallels, repeating themselves during AI development. Perry explores whether the economic mystery Babylon mentioned in Revelation 18 could be the new AI city being planned in Arabia. Is China cryptically alluded to in Revelation 12 by the symbol of the great red dragon? Will men and women marry companion robots in the future? Could the image of the beast in Revelation 13 be an advanced AI creation built to introduce a new religion and to be worshipped as a god? Perry exposes the goal of transhumanism and will shock readers by revealing positive proof of five ways God will allow mankind's most advanced technologies to fail in the future. Perry's new book, Artificial Intelligence vs. God, is now available through Perry Stone Ministries. The offer number is BK-036, and you can request your copy for a donation of $25 or more. Order one of three ways, by calling toll-free at 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323, or online at perrystone.org. You may also send your donation of $25 or more to Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, and request offer number BK-036. This new landmark book is only available through Perry Stone Ministries. Get your copy today so you and your family are prepared for the future of AI technology. We look forward to hearing from you today. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.